welcome back. I'm Krista from Plant Lux. If you're new to my channel, hi, how are you? Please hit that subscribe button. And I am here for you every Monday and Thursday. So thank you for coming back today. And uh, today I thought we would talk about angel wing begonias. This is a um, cane variety that I have today that I wanted to uh, share some some uh, tips and some uh, care requirements and give you a little bit of information about the angel wing begonia. So join us today while we talk about how to take care of this really beautiful, amazing plant. It's good. Okay. So um, let's first begin with the lighting requirements for this plant. This plant is native to South America. That's the origin of the plant. Um, so the lighting requirements are bright indirect light, but you cannot put it in a window where there's very, very hot scorching sunlight. Because if you do, um, you know, the leaves will wilt. I have this one a little bit too close. If you could just bring the whole, yeah. I had I have this one a little bit too close to the window and these leaves um, became wilted as a result. So this is what happens when you have it in a very, very hot window and it's a little too close. So I had to pull it back to avoid, you know, the wilting or scorching of the leaves. So um, bright and direct light. Um, if you have it in a lower light situation, the plant is not going to flower. But if you have it in more of a brighter lighting situation, again, indirect, um, you're likely to get some flowers on your plant. Of course, this, this also um, depends on your fertilization method as well in order to achieve flowers if that's your goal. Okay, so those are the lighting requirements. Let's move on to the uh, humidity. This is a kind of plant that requires a lot of humidity. Now, it's a little bit tricky because, yes, if you have a humidifier, you're, you're usually pretty good to go. Um, but if you don't and you're misting the leaves, the misting of the leaves, um, you have to be very careful that you're not getting them too wet or else it could lead to um, other diseases. And I'll talk about that um, in a moment. But make sure that you have humidity. Obviously, you know, 80 to 90 percent humidity would be the best. But, you know, we don't live, you know, in uh, an environment like that. So, you know, just make sure that you have a humidifier if you do have one of these beauties. Look at this leaf. It's almost the size of my head. It's so big. Isn't it beautiful? Um, next, let's talk about the watering requirements of this plant. This plant is a thirsty plant. However, the trick comes in when you have to keep the soil moist, but you can't let the soil get soggy. So generally what I do is I water it and I let the top couple inches dry out in the pot and I just use my finger to test it. You can also buy those uh, watering meter things. Those work too. Um, but I, you cannot, cannot, cannot let this plant dry out. It will um, end up killing the plant. The, the leaves will end up falling out actually, and falling off. So watering is important to do, I would say maybe in a pot size like this once a week, but you have to keep your eye on it to make sure that the soil is not drying out. Um, that's the watering for this plant. Uh, I think I covered it. Fertilization. Now, I, as you know, if you're new to my channel, um, I, I've talked about you know how I water and fertilize at the same time. So for this particular plant, same as my other plants, I fertilize on a continuous basis. So every time I water my plants, I fertilize, and this one's no exception. So um, with fertilization, I use Jax and I use a diluted form of it. And there just so happens to be enough nitrogen and other ingredients in there, phosphorus or whatever, um, that give the plant everything that it needs. So generally speaking, it's a pretty good uh, fertilizer, but if you don't wanna use that particular fertilizer, just make sure that if you're going for the giant leaf size, make sure you're using nitrogen, uh, one that's high in that content. If you're going for the big flowers, 
um, and you want continual blooms, you'd want a, a, a fertilizer that is heavy in phosphorus and you'd want a very good soil, a very good with organic matter type of soil. Um, that's fertilization. Now that leads us to our next topic, which is soil. For this particular plant soil, you'd want the well-draining soil. Uh, like I said, you do not want it, the soil to go completely dry, but at the same time, you do not want soggy soil. So you're gonna to want to pot it in a pot that has drainage holes, um, and you're gonna to wanna to have the soil that is well, well draining. Um, I, <clears throat> for me, when I pot up, I always use like a, a gen generic, you know, like a miracle Grow potting mix. You know, that's what I've always used, so. Um, but you know, if you have your particular soil that you, that you like, just make sure for this plant, it's well draining, okay. Um, that leads us to my next topic, which is propagation. So with propagation, I want to show you a stalk that's been propagated. Okay. Oh, and then okay. this, this was the growth. So this has been propagated. It's been cut at the top, as you can see here. And then you have this adventitious growth here on the side. Oops, sorry. You see that? Okay. And you can kind of see it on this one as well, where the plant was cut and propagated. Right here is just the cane, and then here's the adventitious growth. This plant responds very well to being pruned. So for propagation, you'd want, a, uh, I would say, a cane or a stem about six inches in length. You can stick it in water, you can stick it in sphagnum moss, or you can stick it directly in the soil. I prefer to do water propagation. Um, I'm just not really keen on soil propagation. That's just a personal preference, but you can do however, you know, whichever way that you prefer. So I've heard a lot of success stories with sphagnum moss. So that's one I would like to try next, but I haven't tried that yet myself, but I have tried water propagation. So that is one way that you would propagate this plant. And then obviously you'd wait for the roots to come and then you could put it, you know, in a pot. Okay. Um, pruning. I was mentioning pruning um, a couple moments ago. With pruning with this plant, it really responds well. It leads to tons of new growth and adventitious growth. So pruning is something that you, you could do to control the shape of your plant. And, um, you know, that's what's happened to this one. Now, I probably am going to have to go ahead and prune this guy down here and maybe propagate it and make a new plant just to control the shape. Because this plant is one that's known to get kind of wild looking and shape <laughs> so you can control it by pruning and of course anything that you prune just make sure that when you are propagating you find the node on the stalk which is the bulbous section and that you have a node because that's where the roots are going to come out of from the node okay i would like to talk a little bit about temperature um, and make sure that you do not have this plant too close to the window, as I said earlier, but also check and make sure that it's not near an air conditioning vent or a heating vent because that will affect the plant and it will not like that. Also, in a lower light situation, you're, you're not gonna get as much growth and your leaf growth and everything else will be a lot smaller and you're not gonna get flowers. Um, this is a smaller variety of an angel. It's not smaller, it's just a, more of a baby. I wanted to talk to you about size. So this plant can get about four to six feet tall. And um, right now this is a mature plant, but it can get larger. It will get as tall as me. I'm about five, four. <laughs> so, you know, uh, in order to control the size of it, you can prune it obviously. But this is, you know, a, um, you know what it looks like when it's a little bit uh, less mature. The leaves are smaller. Obviously the stalks aren't as thick and the plant is, um, you know, immature. Okay. So let's talk about um, pests and diseases. So for this particular plant, um, you know, like I said earlier, if it's too moist on the leaves, it can lead to um, some powdery mildew, um, botrytis, and stem rot. Um, obviously stem rot would come from, you know, when the soil is too moist, or it would also come from um, perhaps even one of the, the mildews. Not actually sure about that, but I know the botrytis leads to stem rot sometimes. So um, if you have any of these diseases like powdery mildew or botrytis, make sure that you get a stronger, I would suggest, uh, neem oil, I usually use that. As you know, neem oil is a, uh, a weaker treatment. 
uh, you might want to go for a potassium bicarbonate or a treatment or a copper fungicide. So those fungicides are generally stronger and that's what I would recommend if you see powdery mildew or botrytis or stem rot. Um, other pressures that you might uh, see on the plant could be things like spider mites or um, you could sometimes see mealybugs. So if you experience any of those pest pressures, you know, start with, you know, spraying off with a watering hose, try to go, you know, natural, then, you know, turn to the neem oil. And then obviously if neem oil is not working for you, go to a stronger, um, you know, fungicidus or, um, you know, insecticidal soap. Okay. So that's my recommendations for if you see any pressures with diseases or pests. Um, okay. So next thing and last thing I'd like to talk about is flowering. Now, if you really want this plant to flower, this plant can flower all year round. I've, I've read conflicting research on the internet. I've read that it only flowers in the summer, and then I've also read that it flowers year round, so I'm not really sure you know, who to believe on that. But um, anyway, <laughs> from my research, if you really are going for the flowers, I'm a foliage girl myself. I like the big leaves, and I like them to look gorgeous. So I'm not really interested in the flowers, but if you are, just make sure you have a, a very heavy phosphorus base fertilizer. And um, if you're going for the leaf, the big giant leaves, nitrogen is usually the key to that. I use jacks, like I've said earlier. So, you know, that's usually a win-win for me with any, you know, plant, especially this one. Okay, so that is it on the angel wing begonia. I highly recommend this plant. It is a very beautiful show-stopping piece to have in your home. And I feel like, you know what, you should run out and try to find one today. Thanks for joining me today. I am here for you every Monday and Thursday. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Yay, okay, all right. Thanks guys for coming out and joining me. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you for watching my videos. I'll see you back here next time.